If I were you, I would do different or think different <laughs> as something that her mother is always quoted for her and saying over and over again. You may have your own stories of your mother's great advice, advice about what to do, what not to do, how to live in the world, how to be happy, how to be joyous, how to feel this peace and contentment within your journey of life. My mother offered three great words of advice. Hush, hush, hush. You see, I can think about many times when she said that, not only just in church, hush, hush, hush. Times when maybe I said something inappropriately, hush, hush, hush. Times when I was in a lot of pain as a little child. Sometimes I'd get up there on my bike, you know, minus those training wheels, making my first attempt. It was just yesterday. And I was driving along and, you know, you fall over, you skin your knee and you run to your mother crying, you know, that skin, knee, that bruised uh, skin, bleeding. And you're looking, oh, you want that sense of comfort. And you come to your mother and she scoops you up, wraps some arms of love around you and says, hush, hush, hush. Great advice. Because it's also important advice for us in our spiritual life that we learn the power of hush, hush, hush. To be quiet, to sit in the silence. Now, it wasn't my mother wanting to usher away the circumstances of the pain and the hurt. It wasn't simply that. But it was that that quieting of the crying and the tears and the whining and the complaining, but my boo-boo hurts. And as a little child wanting to go over and over and recycle the pain, but mommy, you don't realize what happened to me. And oh, I fell and oh, it really hurts. And all, um, and before you know, it began to recycle the pain and the story gets bigger and bigger and bigger and larger and larger as if you are now needed to call the uh, emergency uh, ambulance to come and carry you away to the hospital. And my mother would say, hush, hush simply to be quiet and to listen to her words of advice. Hush to be still. But you know how it is? We often want to speak of our pain. And I think it's true in our spiritual lives that the Spirit of God is calling us and wanting to nurture us, strengthen us, to love us. But there comes a moment when we too have to say, hush, hush, we've got to be quiet, be still. Quit recycling the story of your wound, your hurt, your pain, your issues, your dilemma, whatever it may be. Because we like to recycle it over and over again and talk, talk, talk always. Oh God, you don't know the trouble I've seen. Oh, why me, Lord? Oh, it's so painful. Oh, it's a difficult experience I'm going through. And the Spirit of God is just wanting to say, hush. Because in that silence, it's there when we can receive the very Spirit's leading, guiding direction and the very answers that we seek within our lives. Do you ever notice how impossible it is to get across your words of encouragement or uh, to uh, give the opportunity upon the mind of one who loves to go over and over again their, affli their afflictions? You know, you're working with somebody, but they want to recycle it. They want to go over and over again. They want to, you know, enough of that. I need to talk more about my pain. I need to talk about my issues. So the Spirit of God is saying just the same. I want to offer you these words of encouragement. I want to nurture you. I want to speak with you. I want to commune with you as much as we want to commune with God. But it requires that quieting of the consciousness, the mind, the soul. Hush, hush, hush. A mother's advice was simply there to help us to find these first steps of moving out of pain, to find this journey of coming through to hearing the next comforting, loving words that she would share that it, everything's going to be okay. But I couldn't hear that until I had stopped with the crying, the whining, until I'd stopped with the noise making or the pleading and make it better, make it better, make it better. Oh, it hurts. Oh, it stings. And on goes the story. So it is in the spirit of God wanting to do something within us. Hush. The Old Testament story of the book of Samuel opens up with a beautiful uh, unfolding of the miraculous in the lives of a very special woman, Hannah. If you know the story, Hannah was one of two wives, Hannah and Panina. Panina was the other woman who had all the children. 
two wives of one man. And in this context, in that day and age, your pride, your joy, your fulfillment of who you are as a woman was found in your birthing and bringing forth the seed, bringing forth the heritage, the lineage of the family, having children. She had none. Now, Penina, or Penina, whether you're southern or northern, uh, would express it constantly. I've got kids. Look at me. I'm blessed. The Lord has opened up my womb. I am full of a bounty of blessing. I have provided for my husband, children. Look at me. Look at me. And this would always be rubbing on Hannah and making her so uncomfortable, worried and fretting, feeling, am I fulfilling my role? Am I really fulfilling my calling as who I am? It was that consciousness of that day and age. It was for that time. And there she is seeing her rival constantly taunting her with this. One day she goes to temple. She goes there to pray and she's there crying out and whining and complaining to God. She's doing it in such a way that her lips are moving, but she's not making a noise. And the priest walks by and thinks, this woman must be drunk. What's wrong with her? She's just doing this whining kind of prayer, you know, and let me make, oh, you don't know, God, how painful this experience is. And finally, the priest, realizing that she's not drunk at all, but in passionate prayer, trying to evoke her pain and to release her sorrow, trying all that she can, she is comforted by these wonderful words from the priest who finally says, go in peace. In other words... Hush, hush, hush. Go in peace because God is going to grant you the desire of your heart. Go and walk in that silence. Go in this quiet because what is this perfect peace but a stillness for us. And the Spirit of God is inviting us to journey into a silence, a stillness, a quiet place where we might engage in the wonderful power and presence of the awareness that the unfolding of our desire is already there. It's already been manifest for us. And as she leaves, she goes home and she's there with her husband. Only discover as the months go by, she's pregnant and brings forth a child named Samuel. God's blessing was there. Founded, grounded, spoken to, delivered, I believe, in that perfect peace, in that place of silence. For something healing happens when we move into the silence. There's something that we move into the stillness that happens. We can welcome the peace that speaks to us our answers. But we must be quiet. How the beautiful passage we quote quite often, but quite often don't understand the meaning of be still and know that I'm God. Oh, some of us have a hard time with being still. In our ADD world, we have a hard time. We hate to come to church because we got to, you know, Joanne was just telling me before the service, she was saying, you know, it's, I'm such a go-go active person and I come to church on Sunday morning and I got to be still and be quiet. Got to behave. <laughs> hush, hush, hush. Connie keeps saying. Uh, yes, it's one of those kind of things where she's realizing that, uh, you know, uh, there's power in being quiet and still. We offer opportunities of meditation. A lot of people say, meditation, how could that be anything of today's Christian movement? And meditation, isn't that kind of an Eastern thing? It's the power of us sitting in the silence where the Spirit of God can speak, where we are dwelling in that perfect peace, in that place of peace where wisdom, insight can unfold for our lives. That spiritual place that has such meaning for our lives called the silence or these moments of meditation because it's a state of consciousness that we enter, a state, a place of awareness for the purpose of putting us in touch with the divine mind, putting us in touch with God. We're quiet to say, I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. I want to let the Spirit speak and how powerful it is when we rest in that stillness. When one goes to the silence, he enters into that secret place of the Most High that's spoken of in the passage, inviting us on this journey of prayer that we go within. That's where we find this wonderful place, this secret place. Go to your prayer closet, meaning not a room or a destination, but that place within you where you're centered and you're still and you're resting in that perfect peace and you allow the Spirit of God to speak to you in that beautiful silence, that's where we have the opportunity to hear with great clarity. 
in silent unity and i hope you all have silent unity's phone number on your speed dial it's on the back of your bulletin if you don't they're available to pray with you 24 7. it's our prayer line that we're in connection with so if you ever have need and you're ever feeling uh sort of like i need someone to pray with me right now it happens to be two o'clock in the morning and i don't want to wake the pastor up thank you very much uh, uh you know you can call silent unity at any time seven days a week 24 hours they're there and there are prayer partners there to pray with you i have them on silent uh on speed dial and sometimes i'll punch the button before i engage the car and have silent unity on my cell phone uh sitting there because you can't have hold it in your hands anymore in georgia so i'll have it there and ask them to pray with me while i'm driving over some of the needs or some of the concerns that you all have shared and i'll list them and how beautiful it is to know that there's someone there to pray i love that name silent unity because this is what it's all about in the silence is where we find oneness with god we find our connection we find our most intimate moments often when we are quiet and silent have you ever been with a beloved and in the moment of silence you don't need to say anything but you reach out and grasp their hand and you found the most intimate and powerful connections times when you need not say a word you don't have to say anything because many times you don't even know what to say but you want to offer compassion you want to offer love support encouragement but you find in that silence a great connection with your beloved with family members or people who are close to you so it is in the silence that we find this great oneness this connection with god we may think we're finding great connection the more we storm the gates of heaven the more we plead the more we pound the more we beat on the the gates of heaven and we think oh well, this is how i i'm going to really find intimate connection with god is it wonderful that intimacy is a two-way street do you know that god is wanting to speak to you the innermost power and presence within you wants to communicate with you, wants to speak to you just as much as you would like to communicate with God. And there's that wonderful dialogue that goes on, but it goes on within our hearts and our lives in those moments of quiet where we can receive, where we can hear. Now, as a child, I always got confused about this because I was always expecting God to have some audible voice, that I would hear the voice of God hello Paul I don't know if that's where the voice of God would be or hello Paul it's up to you but I thought it would be some audible voice I would be sitting there and listening and I'm saying they're always talking about hearing the voice of God and I'm waiting to hear and I don't hear it and I don't hear it yet there was a sense of knowing there's a sense of feeling a sense as if the word had already been spoken and I'd already heard powerful moment for me was years ago I was pastoring Bethel Assembly of God in Youngstown Ohio and as a Pentecostal evangelical preacher in those days I was coming out with the dealing with the fact that I was gay and one Sunday morning I got to the sanctuary early before sunrise and I was in the sanctuary all alone praying walking pacing back and forth thinking this is the way to beseech the heavenly presence of God and finally I had exhausted my strength of praying and praying and praying and saying God, do you know that I'm gay? And I felt like the Spirit just said, yeah, so? And I, like, was there an audible voice? No, there wasn't an audible voice, but I felt as if that's what it was saying, that the very Spirit within me was speaking to me right then and there in that moment, as if it doesn't matter. I don't care, I love you. I've always loved you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. All of this wonderful power of presence began to unfold as if I had heard it in an audible voice already, as if it had already spoken and the presence was there, so powerful and so rich. I knew that the love of God was with me. I resigned that Sunday to begin my journey of coming out. In that moment, because I felt I had really had a perfect peace, an intimate dialogue with God because the silence is all about getting ready to hear to listen how powerful it is that when we go into the quiet into the moments of silence we go into our prayer life we're in stillness we're ready to hear sometimes we have to exhaust ourselves and give up like we've prayed and fought and wrestled so much that we finally give up and in exhaustion we lay still and then oh now you're ready to hear now you're ready to listen now you're ready to receive you see, 
in the very beginning, if we sit in that stillness from the very moments of our desire to commune with God, it's that saying, I am ready to hear. I am ready to listen. I am here. Now, as we pick up on that Old Testament story, Hannah has a beautiful child named Samuel. And what does she want to do but give this son back to God? For she felt it's God's great blessing to her. She's so excited. She says, I want to give Samuel back to serve the Lord. So she brings Samuel as a young child back to that priest, Eli. And Eli takes him under his wing to train Samuel to be one of the great prophets of the Old Testament. As a little boy, though, Samuel was sleeping, possibly in a room nearby Eli, and hears this voice of God speaking to him. Confused and wondering what it is, he thinks it's Eli. He thinks it's the priest, and he wakes up Eli and says, Eli, are you talking to me? Did you want me? Are you calling me? No, go back to bed. Samuel goes back in bed, and a little bit later, feels the same story. Wakes up, hey, Eli, Eli, is that you? Are you calling me? Did you want me? Finally, the priest, after several scenarios of this, is saying to simply Samuel, Samuel, just lie down. And when you hear this voice again, I want you to say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Are you ready to say that? For the spirit of the divine is speaking to us. I want you to know that when you are in this place of saying, speak, Lord, I am listening. You will begin to hear all the wonderful, awakening, stirring voices of the universe calling out to you with the love of God. How about these beautiful trees that you look out these windows? They're speaking to us of the very nature and the creative power of God to unfold throughout the seasons, to go through... The transitions of the world around us from fall to spring through winter and into summer, all the seasonal changes of God working through the cycles of our life. We look out there and each season we see the change. It's God at work and it speaks to us of God at work within our own lives through the cycles of the journey that we go through. You see those beautiful words of my mother, hush, hush, hush. The next thing that she wanted to get across to us is listen to me. And, they, they, you know, we can only listen when we are quiet. And that was the comforting thing. Hush, 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 listen, because everything's going to be okay. Listen to this. I want to offer you these comforting words. Do you know how much the Spirit of God wants to comfort you, nurture you, love you, empower you, strengthen you? For the very Spirit wants to say to you, hush, 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 Everything's going to be okay. There, there, your boo-boo is going to be all right. When the scripture says, be still and know, it's that very powerful thing of knowing in that stillness that everything will turn out all right. Because this silence is the beginning of all discovery. It's the beginning of the journey of our spiritual progress. Because knowledge does not come to us when we're constantly rearranging or expressing ideas over and over again that are already in our mind and we're recycling them and going over them and over them. How many of you do that? You have a problem? You worry about it? You stress over it. And what do you do? You name the problem. You think about the problem. You cycle the problem. You name the problem. You think about the problem. You cycle through the problem. And you are constantly expressing over and over again the issues when the Spirit is saying, hush, be quiet. Your knowledge, the truth that I want to impart to you is ready to come to you you must be still to receive this. This is why so many people are uh, incapable of receiving an answer to their prayers because they're always talking and they're not willing to be still and know. Be still and receive. Be still and become aware of the divine message that the Spirit of God has been speaking to all along. We must rest. Consider for a moment, if you would, the courtroom scenario. You know? where you have two lawyers, one for the defense and one for the prosecution, they're all presenting their cases. Each one going out and operating under the essence of the law. But then there comes a moment when all has been said and done, everything has been presented, the cross-examining of the accused and all the witnesses is complete, and the lawyers do something called they rest the case. They rest the case. 
And it's that state of resting the case that they all wait on the decision of the judge. They're waiting to hear. And in those moments as they rest, they wait to learn what manner of law, what will be manifested for them, what will be the outcome. Now, this is not a place of being uh, lazy or no inertia or movement whatsoever. But resting is in the very waiting with anticipation, knowing that there is resolution about to come. When we're in the silence, we need to rest our case. We may have argued with God. We may have struggled with God. We may have wrestled with God. We may be like those who wrestle over and over again. But God, and don't you understand? And this is what I'm going through. And God, don't you hear me? And God, I, we go on and on as we profess all this. And finally, we rest our case and realize, wait a minute. The decision has already been made. The divine power and presence, our good is already created for us. It's waiting for us. We need to rest the case and wait to hear this wonderful decision that the all good is ours. We must come to this place where we rest from our labors and we rest from all of our anxiety and our struggles within our life. For this is the power then of the hush, hush, hush. We are resting in this moment to receive God's divine guidance for our delight. My mother's words of advice. This was a healing word, hush, hush, hush. It was the mother's love being shared within this healing. That something happens when you are quiet. Stop your crying. Stop your whining. Stop your begging. Stop your issues. Something wonderful is going to happen. And you hear these comforting words. It's going to be okay. And I love you. The Spirit of God wants to share these powerful words with our lives because something happens to us in the silence within our lives. We look at the story of Jesus out on the water in the Sea of Galilee, and there the boats are being tossed in the midst of a storm, and all the disciples in turmoil turning to Jesus, and Jesus simply speaks and says, Peace, be still. And in that quiet, all is calm. Something happens. Their whole lives are... Um, marveling and amazed who is this Jesus they're moved and they discover something so much more that was right before their eyes they saw his faith at work and how beautiful it is that something happens to us when we're in the stillness and in the silence that we too become amazed we marvel we are caught in wonder about the wonderful things that are unfolding for us and how God is manifesting and working for our highest and best in the silence we not only begin to hear but we begin to see something unique happens we not only hear the voice of God but we begin to see the unfolding of the divine for us in so many beautiful ways you know how it is when someone tastes something for the first time? Last night, my next door neighbors inviting us, invited us over to sort of uh, welcome to the neighborhood party. They had just moved in about two months ago and they moved in from Vietnam. So we came to a beautiful Vietnamese buffet. Family, all of their Vietnamese friends had come in and they invited the neighbors to this wonderful celebration to honor their new home that they had just moved into. And there, as they began to uh, uncover the beautiful buffet, ooh, what is this? <laughs> I'm looking at these foreign, 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 very strange, out of this world food items I'd never seen before. I did recognize those little mud bugs. What do you call them? Crawfish, crawdads, whatever. I don't know what they call them. I call them mud bugs. You know, those little, uh, um, little tiny crawfish. Is that what it's called? Yes. Uh, uh, big plates of this. Look, okay. Uh, some little gelatinous things that she mentioned. The word jellyfish and squid and uh, all these kind of things in a salad. And I'm going, okay, jellyfish and squid in a salad. Uh, you know, all right. And then there was all these kinds of soups with all kinds of unique things in them. And then there was this crazy little fruit that was on a twig and a branch. I don't even know the name of it, but they're little brown, ball, brown balls that you peeled open like you peel a grape and they look like someone's eyeball when you got it. And you put it in your mouth and spit the seed out. You know how it is when you taste something for the very first time. You taste it. You put it on your tongue. You kind of roll it around. 
Your mind then is attentive to the different flavors. What is this? What am I eating? What this could be? And you're trying to discover what it is. And in that attention that you're putting to it, there's an unfolding. You go, aha, okay. I see. This is good. I can eat this. Uh Uh-huh. And before you know it, I discovered that that gelatin-looking thing was a shrimp dumpling. uh, That it was a clear uh, dumpling with a little shrimp hiding in it. And they covered it in a nice little spicy sauce. And I thought, hmm, okay. I see. I understand. Suddenly there was an attention given and there was a wonderful discovery of saying, I see. So it is when we taste and we see, we discover an attentiveness of the goodness of God. In the silence we taste, we taste and experience the divine as we never could before when we're in the chatter and the conversation and the ongoing knowing of our own plagued and our own issues where we're cycling them over and over again. But in the silence, there's this wonderful moment where we, oh, I see, I understand. And we listen, and when we listen, we begin to see things more clearly. We open our ears and we open our eyes. You see, the beautiful passage of Scripture of the story of Abraham unfolds with a wonderful thought. The land that thou seest, Abraham, that will I give thee as an inheritance. Lift up your eyes from the hills from whence thou cometh. Look out and you will see this wonderful blessing that's there. And that's so true. Hush, hush, hush. Because the Spirit wants to speak and reveal that all that goodness that is intended for you from the beginning of time is available right here, right now. All the love you need, all the healing you need, all the blessing you need, all the guidance and wisdom and insight that you need, everything you need is available. You need to just open your eyes and see the horizon, look out across and understand that God has already prepared for you some wonderful blessings. What happens is we shift our attention in the silence. We shift our attention and we begin to see and discover and begin to know that the goodness of God is there all along. And our limitations, our failures, our boo-boos, are all those conditions that we've just impressed upon our mind. And God says, I heal. God says, I bless. God says, I meet your need. I care for you. I love you. I'm providing for you. There's a beautiful passage that says, look up for your redemption is moving towards you draweth nigh it's coming towards you the goodness your blessing your benefits of the wonderful power and presence are all moving towards you if you would just hush hear and see it's there for you and so today's advice is my mother's advice it's an ancient advice advice that comes from the scriptures be still and know that i'm god for god alone the text says that you read oh my soul wait i rest for god alone i wait for god alone for i rest in silence i love that because you can rest there there's the peace that provided the blessing for hannah you can rest there For there's the hearing of the voice of God that Samuel heard in that moment. And you can rest there in the silence, knowing that God is revealing to you your highest and best. Amen.